Thank you, Mr. LeVay. Um, my my, my um, um, comment is basically a thank you for clarifying the, the Hyannis water supply and the fact that we don't have a deficit um, and that you're, we're working on supply um, and everything's in good. Every, everybody should be um, confident that, that we have plenty of water and nobody's going to run out of water at the moment. Thank you very much for that, Council Starr. To piggyback on that, I actually would like to um, uh, thank you, uh, Tom Andrews, because that actually has been a request of mine too, because there is some you know, uh, misinformation out there, and we just want to clarify that so that uh, people are not alarmed uh, when, when housing projects and things of that come up that uh, we are ready and we have the infrastructure to support that. But furthermore, um, can we have Director Santos, I believe he has uh, some additional comments in regards to that, um, that he might be able to offer and help us. Thank you. Thank you, Director Santos. Good evening, Mr. President, Town Councilors, Dan Santos, Director of Public Works. Um, Councilor Starr, thank you. I think you kind of said what I was going to say, <laughs> but um, with a little more detail. Um, so we have been successfully running the Hyannis water system for 18 years since it was purchased in 2005. And throughout this time, our goal has been to improve the system and understand uh, all aspects of it, make it as good a system as it can be, and to provide all the water that's needed in Hyannis for firefighting and water use. Uh, and I think we've very successfully done that and managed some pretty difficult challenges and, and we'll continue to. So part of that is doing planning. And we developed a document in 2019 to look at future water sources and how we're going to go about providing additional water sources in the future because this town is going to be here forever and we're going to have to keep providing water one way or another. Um, and so the town has an engineering staff, uh, very professional, trained experts in these things. We hire consultants where we need to uh, supplement. Uh, and in this case, we put out a, a report that looked at uh, water demand and needs in the future. So there's been some misinformation, erroneous information. I'm not going to address this why or how, but the fact is there's context that is with this report, okay? And the, this is a, the deficit that people are talking about is a paper deficit. We've never run out of water. We've never come close to running out of water. We've never, uh, we haven't purchased water since 2020 when we brought our MAR uh, treatment plant online. Uh, we, Believe me that if there were a crisis or a problem, I'd be the first one up here talking to you about what we need to do about it. So this report is in the normal uh, planning that we do. Uh, and basically, um, you know, you can look at things. I, I'll just go to one of the conclusions of the report that's being used that where we have a deficit. And I quote, thus it would appear that the quantities of water available from existing sources are adequate to meet current demands of the system. And uh, th when this report was written, we had two wells down. Two wells weren't included. In 2020, we brought one of those wells online, straightway number two, 750,000 gallons a day. And right now, we are, and you have approved the funding for this, uh, contracting for bringing back the Mary Dunn number four well for next summer, another 750,000 gallons per day. So that's 1.5 million gallons per day, uh, more than we have. Our, our average daily requirement is 2.3 million gallons per day. The maximum, which is rarely, the maximum we've ever used is about 5 million gallons per day. Um, that was in, during a drought, that was in 2022, and um, that wasn't for a, a lengthy period of time. So this report actually concluded we have adequate for current needs, we brought on 1.5 million gallons more. And what's not mentioned here is we have 3 million gallons of storage in our system. We have storage tanks at a number of our well sites. So there's another 3 million gallons beyond the 5 million gallons we can pump per day uh, available. So we're not, we're not in a deficit. 
and I'm happy to meet with anyone, any of you individually, to go through this so you can understand better, because uh, this is complicated. It's engineering, and the reason why this shows uh, a deficit on paper is because of DEP requirements that we have pretty much full redundancy in our system. So if one of our, if our major source, and that doesn't mean a well, because we go through a treatment plant. So if our major treatment plant went offline for some reason, then we have to be able to provide water with our other sources. That only makes sense, right? Um, but the chances of that happening are pretty, I mean, the, about the only thing that would cause that to happen would be a meteor falling out of the sky and completely destroying the treatment plant and all the wells at the Mary Dunn well site. And this is just not, it, you know, it's not a, a reasonable uh, situation. But these are the requirements that they have. And so that's why we put this report together. So to predict in the future uh, what our needs would be under that scenario. And we have done a number of things. We have brought treatment to all our wells. We brought all our wells back online. The next one will be in the summer. Um, and uh, we continue to look for new sources mm -hmm. of, uh, for wells. And we're also looking, as part of our comprehensive wastewater management plan, uh, looking at uh, how we use uh, the water from the treatment plant. And there are going to be water reuse opportunities. We're generating 2 million gallons a day and up to 4 million gallons a day in the future of clean water, effectively. So that's another resource. Um, so I guess I just want you to... Mm -hmm understand that we've been managing this, we're on this, and th this is nothing remarkable to us. This is, this is the nature of how we do business. And the last thing I want to say is engineers by training and nature are very conservative. And generally, we're, we're doubling the need. So it's a factor of safety in some parts of engineering, structural engineering, right? You want to be doubly safe so that we don't want calamities and catastrophes. There's peaking factors. You know, we look at doubling uh, a factor. So there's plenty of room, if you will. And uh, for those reasons, I'm not personally concerned. We're on the right track. You funded the projects that will uh, continue to allow the system to grow and improve to provide the best water in the town. So if there's any questions, I'd be happy to take them now. Or uh, if you want to, again, Please come in. We love having you come in and talk to us. And Council Lucky, you have a question for Director Santos. Yeah, no, no, thank you, uh, Dan. That was a beautiful, uh, comprehensive look at what's going on. That helped because I've seen the uh, the comments out there too about the water. So it's it's great to address that. Um, the search for new wells, the one in Barnstable, is that for future use? Is that to increase the redundancy? Is that to take off a well here and replace it? What What is the per – people, I think, are confused about the purpose of that new well, if that, all of our wells are pumping beautifully and all filtered. Sure. That is to address that requirement from DEP for redundancy if we have to – if one of our systems goes completely offline, that we have to provide enough water. If that happened, we, we would have a problem. Um, and so this – searching for new sources, be it reuse of water or providing new wells in other parts of town, that, that is addressing exactly that uh, regulatory requirement. And just a follow-up on that. You, you gave the example like the Mary Dunn well is being struck by a meteor. Yeah. Would any of the other well complexes, are, is Mary, well, Mary Dunn pumping more, like the straightway and Hyannisport wells, they go off? Would it happen... Is any one of the wells a, a critical point or? We have th three complexes. We have 11 wells in our system, basically in three areas. Mary Dunn Road, Mar Well System over off Old Yarmouth Road, and then Hyannis Port, Simmons Pond uh, in that area off Smith Street. So, and they all pump about the same amount of water per day. So it's about a third, a third, a third, about. Um, with the, the right now, the MAR being the greatest because that treatment plant is the, the newest one and that can put through the most water. Um, so I, 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 I don't know if that exactly answers the question you had, but that's, no, I was just curious. So any any one of those could go out, but that's what the the new well is for po possibly new growth and for the redundancy or just for redundancy. It's, it's for both. For both. Um, okay. We, we've done growth projections. 
um, when we did this report that came out in 2019 based on use through 2016. Well, before we started designing for our new treatment plant and what we're doing now, we wanted to revisit that. So let's see how those projections panned out. Well, they were much more uh, conservative than really has turned out. We, we are much, uh, have used much less water than they were predicting for 2020. And so we, we have adjusted our projections based on that. But water demand has grown and will continue to grow. And we want to make sure that we're meeting that challenge. And that's why we're doing all these things, is so that when we need to have that water, we will have it. And I guess the last point is that we have a very uh, tight system uh, for both water and wastewater. When projects come to the town, they come to my office and they, they ask us, can you serve us? Here's our projected, projected water use, wastewater need. Can you provide infrastructure? So uh, we go through that. We go through our system, our projections, what they're proposing, and we tell them yes or no. And in uh, the case of recent projects, ones you've mentioned, the ones that are uh, 35 Scudder Ave, we, they came to us in 2020 and asked us and said, here's what we're proposing. We said, we went back to them and said, yes, we have capacity in our system to accommodate this project. So we put a lot of thought into uh, that. We don't just say yes to everyone. That, that's not the way to proceed. But, um, you know, we have formulas and uh, ways to look at uh, these demands so that uh, we can accommodate the infrastructure growth. 